I got here and, um, you know, just got off the field a little while ago, uh, meetings, and um, looking forward to a great week here. All right. Thanks, Coach. We'll go right into questions. We'll take our first question from Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Go ahead, Nathan. Hey, Ryan. I know that you um, want to be playing on conference championship weekend as Georgia was, but getting that week and, and focusing on Georgia that week, uh, any ways that you think that you're seeing that pay dividends in the weeks since then, the practices you've had either tactically or um, just in terms of uh, attitude, focus, that sort of thing? Well, I think, um, you know, the whole month has been a really good month for us um, as a team. Um, really have got a lot of good work done. Um, I think, you know, it started off, and we always do this, when we're preparing for, for a bowl game. We, we kind of break it up into fundamentals, game plan, and then the game week as we're here in Atlanta now. Um, but but I think that there's been a focus on um, really high levels of execution. Um, I think that there's been a focus on just overall physicality at practice. And, um, you know, I think as we uh, finished our work in Columbus, you could see there was just an energy as we headed off, um, you know, down here to to Atlanta. And then that continued today. So, um, you know, we'll see as we get towards Saturday. But I can say that, um, you know, our guys have been working hard. The staff's been working hard. Um, there's, there's a, a, you know, level of urgency that we know we have to play our best football here in this game. And so we're going to continue to pair, prepare as hard as we possibly can, um, you know, on the field, off the field, and, and make sure we have a great week, week, uh, week here in Atlanta. All right, we'll take our next question from Bill Rabinowitz. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Ryan, just kind of building up a couple of things there. Georgia is obviously a very physical team. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm in a car. I'm sorry. Um, Georgia is a very physical team. How important is it for you to match their physicality? And as you said, you know, I don't know that Ohio State's played an entirely entire 60 minutes of, of top of their team football. Do you agree with that? And how important is it that that happened? Well, the good news is we have great experience uh, being uh, in this style of a game. You know, this is our, our third time playing in the CFP in the last four years. So, um, but we have some really good examples to draw upon um, of what is going to transpire in this game. So we've been talking to our guys about how, first off, um, just how much excitement there's going to be at the stadium, the, the atmosphere, the electricity. Um, and how, when you're in games like this, you know, every yard is, is fight, um, every first down, every point, um, is going to be uh, that way. So, uh, we've been preparing that way. We've been practicing that way and we'll continue to do that throughout the week because we know uh, what a challenge we have here. But uh, when you get into the CFP, certainly, uh, there's just a certain level that we have to, uh, make sure we're preparing for. And, um, I, I think, um, our guys have been doing that and, you know, they're working hard and the leadership's going to have to play really well in this game. Our older guys, our veteran guys are going to have to lead the way because we know in big games like this, veterans have to play veterans. So um, certainly have a, a great challenge and a great opponent in, in Georgia. We know that um, they have a lot of great weapons. Um, certainly they play a uh, high level of football. They're defending national champs and certainly undefeated this year. So uh, we know what we're up against and uh, we're continuing to prepare for that. And, um, and certainly looking forward to this week as we head to Saturday. All right. We'll take our next question from uh, Tony Gerdman. Go ahead, Tony. Ryan, this is going to be one of those games where uh, Georgia has guys that you've recruited. Uh, you guys have uh, players that Georgia's recruited. What's it like as a head coach when, somebody on the other side of the field that you've recruited is having a day against you? Well, it's a small world. Football is, is a um, small world. Um, you know, now even more than ever, you know, you end up recruiting guys and then you end up, um, you know, having uh, played against them or even have them come back in, in, you know, the transfer portal, you know, there's just, uh, there's only so many players out there and there's, there's only so many people typically that fit your profile too. And, and so, you know, it's, we run in small circles and well, we know a lot of the people who play at Georgia, we know their families, uh, but that's, that's similar to a lot of the teams we play. Um, and, you know, now with travel and the way that recruiting goes, you know, you, you're in touch with a lot of people, you recruit a lot of people. And, 
and they've done an excellent job of recruiting and they have a lot of really good football players on that side of the ball or on, on um, in all three phases, um, you know, Georgia and, and Kirby's done a good job of recruiting. So we know those, uh, those guys, we know how talented they are and, and obviously how well they're coached. So uh, we know the challenge ahead of us, but, uh, but to your question, you know, we're, we're kind of used to playing against guys that we know about and um, that we've recruited against. All right, we'll go next to Chip Towers from the AJC. Yeah, Ryan, I, I just if, if you would go over the logistics just a little bit of uh, you guys deciding to get in on Christmas night. Uh, did you guys Christmas together, for lack of a better word? And um, and um, and then what's just wondering what your practice uh, regimen is like? Are you guys still hitting and stuff or is this install? What's the what's the week ahead look like you from a preparation standpoint with all this bowl stuff going on in between? Sure. Sure. Yeah, we um, yeah, we did. We got in last night and um, had a little dinner for everybody last night, uh, which was great. And, and um, appreciate Gary and everybody at the Peach Bowl doing a, a great job for the families. And, and um, you know, I have a lot of family and children here on the travel party. So, um, you know, there was a Santa Claus here handing out gifts for the families. And so that was great. You know, it was a quick flight uh, down. So, um, you know, for those who were on the charter, there's a good portion of our team that wasn't on the charter. They were flying in from different parts of the country um, as, as we gave them um, a couple of days off before we headed to the bowl site. So um, got here and then it's going to be a typical week. You know, went over there and practice today and then uh, we'll keep our routine, our routine. Um, you know, we're going to try to do the best we can to make, um, you know, the hotel here, our, uh, our Woody Hayes Athletic Center and and make Mercedes Benz our, our Woody Hayes practice facility, you know, and I think that's part of the process of being at the bowl site. So um, try to keep things as normal as possible. Thank you. you All right. It. We'll go next to Spencer Holbrook. Go ahead, Spencer. Well, I think that's why you have to keep as many things routine as possible um, because it is a little bit different. There are some things that are not normal, like you said. Um, so how many things can we possibly just keep the routine so that when guys um, are here at the hotel or over at the at the stadium, um, you know, they can kind of visualize where things are and, and keep the routine, the routine. So they don't have to really process too much there and they can focus on getting on the field and uh, doing a great job in their preparation and practicing. But um, you know, the, the Peach Bowl and the, the, everybody at Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl does a great job of, of setting up these events and organizing things so that the guys have things to do. But, you know, I think our guys are going to do a good job of staying focused on what really is important here, and that's playing the game at 8 o'clock on Saturday. All right, we'll go next to Joey Kaufman. Ryan, sorry if there's a bit of uh, crowd noise here. I just had a question about the, the uniforms you guys are wearing, the, the playoff threads with the thicker uh, – gray stripes on the sleeves you guys have worn them all the all the playoff games since you've been the coach uh what do you like about that look um that's kind of been your predominant playoff look yeah we, we try to um you know uh you know honor the traditions and, and try to do the best we can in that area and make sure that we're, we're doing a great job and um you know that that's been something that we've done here uh, in the past and um you know our guys like it we've got good feedback on that so um, we decided to do that again this year. All right, we'll go next to Charles Odom. Go ahead, Charles. There are a, a lot of brackets on uh, the skill positions on Georgia's depth chart, and I'm wondering as you prepare for Georgia, um, uh, how does that uh, affect the difficulty when they, they're rotating so many running backs, receivers, tight ends, et cetera? Yeah, well, they've done a great job recruiting and have depth um, at so many positions. And so I know one of their, um, was something they take a lot of pride in is playing, uh, well, a lot of depth, um, you know, in, in, in offense and defense, you know, I think, like you said, there's, there's guys who roll in the, in the, the front, there's guys who roll in the back end, multiple running backs, multiple wide receivers. Um, so, uh, you know, that's when you're playing against a really good team who plays with a lot of depth and is recruited really well. That's, that's one of the, 
the things you have to uh, prepare for. Um, and what does that mean? Well, you just have to, you know, know that you're not going to just hone in on one or two guys. You got to uh, be aware of more than one of those guys. And, um, you know, that's a sign of a good team. All right, we'll go next to Bill Landis. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Ryan, uh, the, the last time we saw you guys in a playoff game against Clemson, you guys did a, a really good job of kind of using tempo to your advantage in, in that game. And, and I'm wondering if you think a similar approach in this game is necessary against Georgia's defense. And then also um, maybe broader, just how your philosophy on that has developed over the course of your career, whether you've you've ever wanted to play super fast or if you've always been someone who tries to balance that. Yeah, um, you know, there's times like like you said that we we've done that before, uh, and it's it's been very good for us. You know, um, as we get closer to the game, we'll kind of figure out how that fits for us. But I think one of the things that um, you know we have done over you know the past five six years is is have the ability to do that um, when need be, or if we think it gives us an advantage uh, for a, a myriad of reasons, then uh, we'll do it. Um, you know, I think it's uh, you know one of those things where nowadays. If if you're just no huddle going really, really fast every single game all the time, if that's all you do, teams can get immune to it. Um, but I think if you have the ability in, you know, switch it up from game to game or from series to series or play to play, then it's a little bit more of a weapon. And that's something that we've kind of um, probably done more here in the last few years than uh, early on. We used to play a lot faster, I think, as, as you remember, just a lot of snaps. But teams have kind of adapted that a little bit more and they become no huddle defenses. So, you know, we try to stay ahead of that and, and use it as a tool, but not something that uh, we're doing all the time, every game. All right. We've just got time for about two to three more. We'll go next to Stephen Means. Go ahead, Stephen. Well, Ryan, I get on the recruiting trail. I know you guys kind of recruit all over the place. When you were a marker, you know, kind of strategizing different areas you want to go into, is there an idea of, Maybe a number, of like what would make a, a trying to attack a certain area, what would make that worth it in the long run? Well, there's a lot that goes with it. I think first off, it's the location in the proximity to uh, Columbus and Ohio. Um, I think that that matters a lot. Um, you know, certainly the, the, the number one focus is the, the state of Ohio uh, for, for a lot of reasons. But uh, once you get outside of that, then, then certainly there's a kind of a four to five to six hour radius that, um, you know, is, is something that we take a look at. But then from there, for instance, like in the state of Georgia, uh, just, you know, tremendous amount of talent, really well coached players, uh, great programs, you know, they, they play football year round. And so, you know, they're, they're graduating high school, you know, in a position to really compete for spots coming out uh, of high school into college. And, uh, you know, so being down here is great this week. We certainly have recruited this area very hard and uh, know how competitive it is here, but they have great players and great coaches. So um, this is certainly an area that we, we focus hard, heavy into, uh, you know, in recruiting in the recruiting cycle. It's, um, you know, less than 10 hours of a drive and obviously an easy flight, you know, from Atlanta to Columbus. So uh, it's easy for folks to get, you know, to and from Atlanta to, to Columbus. And, uh, and certainly the amount of players here uh, speaks for itself. All right, we'll go next to Dan Hope. Hey, Ryan, this is, you know, second game in a row that you guys are going up against a team that's really good at running the ball. So when you look back at, you know, what happened against Michigan, what are the things you look at that you guys have to do better to be able to stop the run without, you know, giving up too much in a pass game? Yeah, Georgia does a great job. Um, you know, and I think they have a great mix. Um, you know, I think – when you look at, um, you know, what they do on offense, they're going to try to challenge you in a lot of different areas. And certainly it starts with with the run game, like you're saying. And so, you know, we've got to play with great fundamentals. Uh, we have to learn to, um, you know, how they're trying to attack us within the game. And uh, and then obviously, you know, get our guys into the best position possible schematically. But um, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to fundamentals and run into the football, playing really hard, pad level, uh, tackling. And, you know, certainly, like you said, you know, you, you can't uh, overcommit because then you, you put yourself at risk, risk in the back end. So, um, you know, we have to do a good job of, again, the coach's job to make sure that we put our guys in the, the situation to be the most successful. And then it's our guys job to play really, really hard. And so we've take we've taken a, a hard look at certainly what happened in the last game, but also the challenge coming into this game and uh, put it put a good plan together. You need to continue to have a really good week of practice. And and then we let the guys go, the guys go play. 
and um, you know, in this environment, they, they got to go play fast. And um, you know, having a couple extra weeks of preparation has helped their guys for sure. All right, we'll go next to Jordan Hill. Go ahead, Jordan. Ryan, you were asked about physicality earlier. What stands out to you when it comes to Georgia's defensive line and specifically with their physicality? I think when you look at their defensive line, first off, you see um, you see some really good players with really good size, um, but you also see multiple um, you know people that can play. You see you know really two, sometimes three deep, you know, at each of the positions inside, but. Um, I think they do a great job with their hands. I think they do a good job with their uh, pad level. Um, and, and, you know, they try to just, you know, eat up as many gaps as possible and, and try to, um, you know, try to create a mess inside. And they do a good job of that. So, um, you know, in half, you know, they've done that against a lot of great teams and a lot of great offenses. So uh, we know that we got to play our best game up front. We know what the challenge is and certainly some great players over there. So, um, you know, but that's that's what, you know, working towards this all year is all about. You know, you have to be playing your best football right here in the CFP, and, and certainly we're going to get challenged here on Saturday. All right, and we'll take our last question from Patrick Murphy. Go ahead, Patrick. All right, instead of Patrick, let's go to Andy Backstrom. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. You know, players told us in mid-December there was a lot of good-on-good good practicing. At what point do you taper that off, and, and when do you know when what time to taper that off? Yeah, we, we did a lot of that um, during the fundamental phase, kind of that first phase, and then we we mixed in um, that during the second phase. And then as we head into this week, we'll still have some good on good like we always do, but this is a typical game week practice for us. So uh, there'll be scout work. They'll still be good on good, and I think – um, mixing that in, you know, keeps our guys, uh, keeps, keeps their edge. Um, and so we'll, we'll mix that in this week, but, um, but, but as we head into the game week, this will be more of a typical week where, uh, leading up to this, we did a lot more good on good. All right. That'll do it for you, coach. Thanks very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, we're going to reset, and I believe we'll be joined by a few minutes each by a couple of players. I think we might be starting first with uh, linebacker Tommy Eichenberg. Um, does it feel different at all for a playoff? And now that you're here, when might that set in if you have any nerves? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, I would say probably closer to the game. Um, but, um, you know, I'd say it's more, you know, excitement uh, to play. All right, we'll go next to Nathan Baird. Go ahead, Nathan. Tommy, just as you guys look at what Georgia does as a, a, a rushing attack, what stands out to you why that's been so effective? Yeah, I think um, all around, um, I mean, they got a good old line, good running back and a good scheme. So I think when you when you put all those together, um, you know, you, you'll be pretty good. All right, next to Bill Rabinowitz. speak specifically about the challenge of facing Georgia's tight ends. Obviously, it's more than one. It's Brock and, and Washington. How big a challenge is that? What do you guys have to do? Yeah, uh, they're good tight ends. Um, they, they can 
Pat, n- n- like they were uh, effective in the pass game, also in the run game too, good as blockers. Um, so I think when it comes down to that, you know, everyone's got to do their job. Um, yeah. Thank you. We'll go next to Chip Towers. Go ahead, Chip. I mean, I just uh, I wonder what your familiarity is with Georgia. You got uh, you got any friends over there? Have you known much? Uh, were you recruited by them? And just kind of, uh, you know, what's your level of familiarity with your opponent? Mm. Uh, you know, before playing them, uh, you know, no familiarity. I mean, I've seen them play, um, but obviously this past week studying them now. But, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know anyone that, that's went there. Um, you know, nothing really. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, we'll go to Spencer Holbrook next. I think it's very important. Uh, you know, Coach Day was telling us, you know, we're on a bowl and, and things like that, but, you know, we're down here to play a game to beat Georgia. Um, and I think, you know, we got to do all these events and stuff, but it's, you know, we got one goal and it's, it's to beat Georgia. All right. Uh, back to Charles Odom. Tell me one more about the uh, Georgia run game. As you've uh, studied game film, um, Obviously, they they roll um, three, maybe four running backs. Do you see uh, anything distinguishable in in terms of their style, or do they seem to be um, the same kind of uh, the same kind of uh, physical and speed and same kind of mix of, of talents? Uh, I'd say um, you know just with running backs, um, you know, I'd say every running back kind of plays different. Um, you know, sees the game different, sees holes differently. Um, you know, some are faster than the others, but I'd say overall, you know, they're all they're all great running backs. Um, so all right. Next question from Tim May. Yeah, I got called out. Hey, uh uh Tommy, when you look at uh, a couple of games, your last couple of games there, Tali uh, had a little bit of success scrambling, getting away from you guys, getting those little pickup yards. Obviously, JJ McCarthy kept drives alive with some scrambles, some uh, timely runs and stuff. What, what are sort of the lessons learned from those uh, two experiences? Because uh, clearly Stetson Bennett has that capability also, as he has shown uh, in a lot of big games. Yeah, I think um, just with quarterback run, quarterback scramble, um, you know, it comes down to doing our job. Um, you know, quarterback scramble can, you know, happen in pass and everyone's covered up and he scrambles, but, you know, the play is never over, right? So you got to keep going. Um, yeah. quarterback, quarterback run really comes down to doing your job. Um, man, so that's what we're focusing on. All right. Tommy, I don't see any other questions in the queue, so you're all set, buddy. We appreciate your time. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. I will reset again quickly and we'll welcome tight end Kate Stover here in a moment. If you have any questions for Kate Stover, please go ahead and use the raise hand feature and get in the queue. Thank you.
All right, everyone. It looks like uh, it looks like we're still waiting on Cade. I think he's on the way to the room, so it'll be just a minute. All right, everyone, I, I apologize. I just got word that um, Kate is is delayed. It looks like it may be another few minutes before he's able to join us. So sorry about that. We'll get him to you as soon as we can.
All right, again, we apologize for the delay. Should be just another minute or two. Thanks for uh, thanks for being patient with us. Hey, Matt, can you hear me right now? It's Chip. I sure can. Okay, I've just lost the... Uh... All right, Cade, welcome. I think How you we've doing? Got a, we're, we're doing great. We're doing great. Thanks for the time. All right, we're going to continue with Cade Stover now. Remember to get your uh, hand raised for questions, and let's lead off with uh, Bill Rabinowitz. Go ahead, Bill. Hi, Cade. This game was, was a month ago. Does it seem like a month ago? Does it seem like a, a day ago? Does it seem like a year ago? Gratified, you get a second chance. I'll be okay. honest with you, Bill. I didn't hear a word you just said. Oh, I'm in a car. I'm sorry. I said, the, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I said the Michigan game was exactly a month ago. Does it seem like a month? Does it seem like a year, a day? I mean, what's that been like? And how gratified are you that you have a second chance as a team? I mean, we're all, all, all the focus is on Georgia right now. There's, uh, I mean, that one stings, yes, but right now we're focused on winning this game right now, and we're not worried about that. Thank you. All right, we'll go next to Cameron Teague. Hey, Cade, I, I, I asked Steele this a uh, couple days, uh, maybe last week. You guys, both of you and him, have had a lot of success switching positions. Ohio State has done it before. You've done it. I mean, Chips goes back and forth. Xavier plays receiver and running back sometimes. 
what is it at Ohio State that makes you guys as a program so successful? Um, and is there something that something to a specific player being good at being able to change positions and be successful at it so quickly? Uh, I just think that sometimes, I mean, there's multiple different versatile players on this team that can do a lot of different things. And uh, to really figure out what they're best at, you got to move them around a couple of times and give them a try out of each, each one of them. So uh, we've got lucky enough to have some guys stick in those spots and it's been good. All right, we'll go next to Jordan Hill. Go ahead, Jordan. Uh, yeah, just wanted to ask about uh, what, what was set out to you about Georgia's defensive line, just knowing you guys are going to be going up against them Saturday. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough, uh, tough big front seven. Uh, I mean, athletic and long. So uh, we're excited for the challenge. We're excited to play them. All right, next to Nathan Baird. Hey, Kate, before you guys uh, even knew you were going to play Georgia and really before you knew for sure you're in the playoff, uh, those practices and the mindset sort of started shifting to Georgia um, right that week of the, the conference championship games. Do you think that set any kind of a tone and d did it pay off for you guys in, in the weeks that have been leading up to now? Yeah, I think anytime you have an opportunity to get back on the field earlier than what you expected and without a uh, – set in stone foreseen future uh for us to be out there and practice and have those couple days uh it was real it was very helpful and beneficial now next we'll go to tim may go ahead tim uh thank you very much Brad, I, I was wondering uh kate have you guys amongst each other spoken about this or thought about this that 23 points is not enough points to win games like this and three points in the second half is not acceptable how much is that stuck in y'all's crawl as y'all uh, prepare for this game, knowing the challenge ahead of you? Uh, I mean, we practice every play, every every snap that, I mean, if it doesn't score, then, I mean, there's – I mean, we're – I mean, that's not uh, acceptable for us. And clearly that's not, I mean, that obtainable, yeah. of course. I mean, football, they practice too. But, uh, I mean, we expect to go in there and uh, be successful with every drive. And if we don't, we're going to come back and solve the problems. Yeah, real quick, you know, last year this time, you were you were switching over. You were playing linebacker in the Rose Bowl. You know, there was kind of a hodgepodge on offense. Y'all, your two top receivers didn't even play in that game. Obviously, they opted out and stuff. Is there a sense of a little – maybe calm is not the right word, but of of confidence that uh, this group is together. You know, you understand what I mean? You know who's – you know who's who. You know who's got each other's back, et cetera, going into this one. Yeah, I mean, we're excited. I mean, we got a good group of guys with us here that uh, we trust each other, and we're excited to go in here with the group we got. Thank you, man. All right, next, uh, Chip Towers. Go ahead, Chip. Yeah, Kate, thanks for doing this. Uh, I just wondered, you know, in the uh, uh, tight end fraternity, do you keep up much with the other tight ends? Obviously, Georgia has a pretty good, a uh, couple of pretty good ones, and uh, Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington, and uh, the position itself seems to have had a resurgence in football overall, certainly as is Georgia, but seems like it has in other places and too. Can you speak to that? Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, it's just a very key piece to a good offense. Uh, if you got a guy, I mean, it's kind of a, it's a both. I mean, your offensive lineman and your receiver. So if you got a guy that's good enough to do both, you can really add elements to your offense that you wouldn't, if you had a guy that couldn't do that. So I think just overall having the people uh, having a time position really come back to life, it has to do with that and people realizing that you can do a lot with that position. All right, we'll go next to Tony Gerdman. Hey, Cade, so many people are talking about the Georgia tight ends. Do you think um, – are, are the, has the, have the Ohio State tight ends heard that? What do you guys think about that? Are you guys being overlooked? Your position. Right. I mean, I'm pretty sure <laughs> – uh, that's a good question. I don't know, man. We're just ready. Uh, I'm not getting caught up in what's being said, what's not being said, because it really doesn't matter at the end of the day here. We're just trying to win this game. All right, time for a couple more. We'll go next to Bill Landis. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Kate. Um, <clears throat> I know you guys don't play like super fast, up tempo all the time, but but when you do, it, it does seem to, to kind of suit you guys well and be effective. Uh, what, what do you like as an offense when you do get to play? That fast, and, and how's it feel? I guess when you're able to put a defense on its heels that way. Uh, just like you said, I mean, keeping defense on its heels and not letting the feet get in the ground, and uh, really get their keys and eyes right right away. Uh, I mean, it can lead to some indecision here, and uh, just some blown coverages here and there. So we like to mix that in here and there. Next, we'll go to Austin Ward. Go ahead, Austin. Kate, I know you would never 
you don't want to use this as an excuse, but you were a little banged up there the last couple of weeks of the regular season. How much do you think that impacted you or limited you at all? And how much did sometime this month help you to get ready for Saturday night? I mean, everybody's banged up in the season. Uh, well, how much it affected me or not, I'll never admit it because, it, I mean, that's just the way it is. You can't be like that. You're playing football. You're, you signed up to get beat up, so you better play beat up. Uh, I mean, last couple of weeks have been nice uh, to kind of get your feet back underneath you here, and hopefully we're going to come in this game healthy. All right, we'll take our last question from Andy Backstrom. Go ahead, Andy. Kate, obviously it's extremely tough to run the ball against this Georgia team, but how much is offensive balance being stressed right now, especially given the way that second half went against Michigan? Uh, I mean, we're just uh, – we got the plays now. We got the people here to do it. Uh, it's just a fact of putting it all together here and playing all 11 together and just doing your job one at a time here and be successful at running the ball. All right, very good. Cade, that's going to do it. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time.